Done. I am freshly done with finals. Oh, my name is Tony, and the weight off my shoulders is palpable. In fact, it feels kind of weird at this point. Like, I've spent so long being stressed and moving from deadline to deadline that right now my brain just doesn't really know what to do. Is this even safe? Yeah, probably. I just need to relearn how to enjoy my free time again. But, I mean, this does feel pretty weird. When would it become dangerous? What if the literal weight were off my shoulders? What if I were weightless? That would be a way bigger shock. I mean, think about it. We are fighting our own weight from the moment we're born. We're built for it. And while emotional weightlessness may be more realistic for some of us, true weightlessness should be on our minds too, because humanity is getting ready to try out that whole real deal space flight thing in the near-ish future. If our vacation destinations ever stop being on Earth, we're gonna have to get ready to experience weeks, months, maybe even years of actual weightlessness, kinda like how uh, I'm about to experience a whole week of emotional weightlessness. So. Let's talk about it today on Long Story Short. Do you need gravity? First things first, let's get a few things straight. We're going to assume you're in a weightless environment in a spaceship. If you weren't, the vacuum alone would be enough to kill you in about 30 seconds. The pressure in space is very, very low, something like one atom per cubic centimeter versus something like 10 to the 19th in the air here on Earth. Additionally, temperatures in space can be pretty hostile too, as the low density can leave some spaces only a few degrees above absolute zero, while direct exposure to starlight can leave other areas hot enough to cook a person. So you better be in a spaceship. On top of that, there's a lot of radiation in space that your ship might not protect you from, but that's a topic for another video. Just know that it usually won't kill you anywhere near as fast as temperatures or pressures outside your ship. But anyway, microgravity, let's get into that. Now, oftentimes you'll hear people refer to space as a zero gravity environment, but this is wrong. Gravity is a function of the distance between the centers of two objects and their masses. Specifically, it's an effect we see arise from the way mass distorts the fabric of space-time around it. Everything with mass distorts space-time a little bit, and space-time affects everything with mass a little bit, or a lot, it really depends on the mass. Vsauce's video on gravity explains it very well. I highly, highly recommend it. In any case, the only way that two objects could have no gravity would be if one or both of them had zero mass. Back to gravity in space. While there's no such thing as no gravity, the force of gravity does scale with distance. Because things are very far away from each other in the space between planets, the effect of gravity can become weak enough that it essentially isn't there. An environment like this, or those experienced in orbit, is known as microgravity, or a microgravity environment. And it's what astronauts on active missions must contend with on a daily basis. Astronauts are exposed to a microgravity environment whenever they go into orbit or beyond. While videos from the International Space Station show astronauts doing flips and practically flying around their space station in whimsical glee, the bitter truth is that the human body was never designed to operate in a microgravity environment. Consequently, there are a lot of negative health effects that astronauts have to contend with. Speaking in broader terms, there are two big effects to worry about. The first is a consequence of the newfound freedom of movement that astronauts experience without a constant downward force. Much of what they know about moving around goes right out the window in this scenario. They can't walk anywhere, they'll just push themselves off the ground and go flying. On the ISS, the forces that are pulling them down are so negligible that the human body almost completely brushes them off. 
This is actually a pretty serious problem. In, in fact, it's a very serious problem. The load-bearing tissues of the body, muscles and bones, are designed to experience the stress of normal Earth gravity. You are built to function with gravity pulling on you all the time. When that stops, all these load-bearing tissues start to see way less use. A fundamental principle of anatomy and physiology states that tissues respond to stress and adapt themselves to meet whatever challenges they face. As a result, these structures will weaken to accommodate the new, lesser stress of microgravity. There is a great deal of muscle atrophy, especially in the legs. The muscles shrink because they aren't being used to walk or stand anymore. Even the bones experience a loss of mass, known as demineralization, because they simply don't need to be as strong as they once were. The issue is deeper, though. The second major effect of microgravity on the human body is also a problem with physics, but it involves the body's fluids. Since gravity isn't naturally pulling the bodily fluids toward the feet, as it typically does on Earth, these fluids, especially blood, tend to spread out more evenly through the body. Again, this is a problem. Our bodies are not designed to have equal amounts of fluid everywhere. Our species has been dealing with gravity for its entire existence. The circulatory system has to accommodate this change and adjusts the circulation of blood through the body to try and maintain some semblance of what it would do on Earth. The heart itself weakens too, again due to the aforementioned muscle atrophy. Tissues are doing less work, requiring less oxygen, which requires less work. Add to that the marginal effects from changes in blood pressure, and your heart is in a pretty rough spot in space. So we've got a pretty big problem here, specifically regarding people bringing back out of space. As it stands, microgravity alone is enough to pose a great risk to astronauts returning from long trips. After all that weakening happens, turning the gravity back on again can be like, I don't know, starting a car for the first time in a decade. There's a pretty good chance that something's gonna crap out if you're not careful. So how can we protect our astronauts from this stuff? Well, to start, we can make sure that the people we send up are already at peak physical health. If they start off strong, the total deterioration of their body will be significantly less than somebody who is already physically frail. Astronauts on board the ISS also have access to specialized exercise equipment, including a treadmill and a weight bench that uses air hydraulics to provide resistance for deadlifts, bench presses, and curls. Allowing the astronauts to fight against the harmful effects of microgravity on their bodies. This really is a use it or lose it scenario. And until we find a way to keep the weight on in space, we're going to have to take extra steps to use it as far as our bodies are concerned. So let's recap. The effects of the temperature and pressure of space on the human body are tragically fatal but we can mitigate them by creating specialized spacecraft that protect the humans inside from the certain death outside. Microgravity, though, is trickier. It's not necessarily dangerous right away, but over time, weightlessness can wreak absolute havoc on your body's integrity. Unfortunately, we don't really have the technology to avoid weightlessness right now, so we've got to do what we can with regular and vigorous exercise using specialized equipment in space. As usual, let me know what you think. Is the future of space travel tons of personal futuristic treadmills, or will it be a big spinning spaceship? Are you even as hyped as I am for this stuff? I'll probably be old as dirt by the time we're really figuring this stuff out, but I'm incredibly excited, especially for the whole spinning spacecraft thing. I just think it looks cool. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, as usual. Thanks for watching. Thank you.